<laughs> how, how do you feel coming out, obviously, off the last couple of road games here? You are going into your final uh, stretch here in the last, next couple of games. Um, sure, look, look uh, we're, we're, it's nice to have the Pac-12 wrapped up, but as a head coach, you find reasons to be paranoid. Um, you don't even need them. You make them up. <laughs> so, you know, obviously concern for me is our emotional. I'm a big believer in your emotional gas tank. And it, now our guys want to finish strong at home, so that's on our side. We get high character guys, some seniors that obviously, you know, this week means a lot to them. But they do know we've won the Pac-12. So in a way, I wish we, you know, needed both wins to win the Pac-12. Um, so yeah, you just got to, you, you know, you don't want to lose your edge because obviously Arizona State's coming in uh, where, you know, they're either in or, you know, on the bubble of the tournament, so to speak. So, um, you know, they, they're in a must-win situation. So these are things that, uh, you know, coaches are paranoid about. It's the life of the coach. So, uh, so my biggest thing is, you know, uh, we were off Monday, uh, light day yesterday, just trying to get our legs back under us and emotionally get our gas tank, you know, back towards full. So with a veteran team like that, that you have, what do you do for an emotional gas tank? Do you leave them on their own? Do you? No, I mean, we talk about it, yeah. you know, but they're, they're not rookies. I mean, obviously they, they, you know, they, they, uh, they know, you know, they, they, they know it was, a, you know, it's a long road trip with the extra day. Um, our furthest one, and uh, it would be, our, it's going to be our shortest one in a few years, but, <laughs> but, uh, you know, is uh, they, they understand this week's big for them. You know, I try to make it about them. You know, I, I, I but we talked early in the year. You know, Ben, ben Howland came to practice and he said, "Look, you guys got to do whatever you got to do to get the one seed in the West, and you can do it." And he was talking to Tiger and High Man David. You know, he goes, "You guys got great. You guys are great players, but more." And he watches them. He watches practice. He's like, "You guys are great leaders. You've got to try to get the one seed in the West." That's what he just he was pounding it to those guys in his talk after practice and. They've been focused on that. I told them to do it. You're going to have to win the Pac-12. Um, but you know, reality is we're going to have to win this week. If we're going to do that, we got to win two this week. So they understand that. So it, you know, I don't have to sell them on that. They're they're well aware of that. Plus, we got our home winning streak, and like I alluded to, you know, you got some guys that um, have had great careers at UCLA uh, that you know this their last week as you know playing in front of their students and their fans. You know, at home, obviously. Coach, uh, when you consider those that group of guys and the fortress that they've made, Holly, um, I guess coming into these final two home games, what emotions are you feeling? You know, knowing they rode it out with you, all the wins you've had there. You just it, it, um, you, you want them to finish strong. You know, um, you know. Sometimes they, they, I heard this one the. Uh, Obviously, the price of success is high, um, but the, uh, the 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 price of regret you'll never be able to pay. It's just it's, it's you can't get over it. So you don't want them to. You, you, I like I know uh, the rest of their life they're going to remember this week. So I, you want them to win because you don't want them to go out on the wrong note. For me personally, I think about that. For me personally, I'm hoping we get five more weeks left. So, like, I'm not really sitting around thinking about this, you know, any endings, to be honest with you. Where does Jaime Jaquez rank as a player you For coach? me? For you. Oh, he's near the top. Near I mean, the top? top? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, maybe you've had some, I've had some great four-year players uh, that have played for me. Like, uh, of great people, great production, you know, combination. Um, Sean Kilpatrick at Cincinnati um, scored over 2,000 points there. Uh, Gary Clark, senior year, um, you know, great player there. Uh, he won player of the year, defensive player of the year, and sportsman of the year in his senior year. Um, you know, those are just, those are two of the guys that would come to mind. Like, you know, great four-year players, just unbelievably productive. They played four for me. Um, but, um, you know, he's right there. What What are some of the things you're looking to kind of shore up basketball-wise before the NCAA tournament? 
and you look at this team and you say, we yeah. have to do this better going into the tournament to, to advance? Well, you're always trying to develop, you know. Um, so for me, it's <clears throat> you got offense, defense, rebounding. And you also have special situations, you know. Uh, I've been waiting on one of you guys to come in here with the analytics stuff. Um, especially, you know, the, the younger guys, you know, they're reading all that stuff. So, like, so we're, we're number one in the country in baseline defense, special situations, top 10 in baseline offense. Um, so you're always trying, you know, we've been down. Those, like, there's, I always tell the guys, like, you have to have talent or you're not in a conversation. But there's a reason that if you're 25 and four, uh, you win a league, like, there's a reason. We lead the league in turnover margin by far. We lead the league in scoring defense. Um, you know, you go down the line of things that there's a reason you're winning. You know, our offensive rebound percentage, we lead the league in. Um, so, you know, it's not just because we wear UCLA jerseys, it's because we got Jaime Hawkins on our team. Um, you know, you have to have all that stuff. It's really hard to win a conference and to close it out early. So, uh, you got to try to always, you, get better in certain areas. So for us, it's everything. You know, it's still it's still everything because you got to defend different types of teams. Um, so, and whether it's being able to be good in our press when we need it, uh, you know, different parts of our defense, it can improve. Obviously, offensive execution can improve. What about free throws? Well, always, yeah. absolutely. Free throws is an interesting one because um, you know, it's very, it's individual. It's not a team thing at all. You know, so you got to work with guys individually, which we do. It seemed like all of us when practice is over, every coach is, you know, work working with guys individually. I don't know if I was imagining this, but it seemed like a dem had more arc on his shot, uh, free throws last week, and they were going in better, more. Um, that's because I took over coaching the dem's free throws last week. <laughs> so, um, yeah, look. Uh, hopefully, he can continue that. We made, we did make some adjustments. You know, some minor stuff. Try to get less movement. Um, sh you know, sh I alluded to those guys. They none of them have any idea what I'm talking about. But uh, you know, it, it, I alluded it, it allude to golf. You gotta have, you gotta shorten your putting stroke. You know, you got too much going on. So we tried to shorten his stroke a little bit. Mac didn't get to shoot any, but we've obviously been working hard with him as well. You know, Jaime and Jalen tend to come out of their dribble firing without finding their target. You know, so you got to take your time, be able to do the same thing every time. Tiger is the best at it. That's why his percentage is so high. How much do you concur with Coach Allen that you got to get that one seat in the West? Well, I would defer to him since he's had it and I haven't. <laughs> I do know that travel is an issue and I've made one Final Four and took one flight to get there. <laughs> it's a trick question. <laughs> you know, where last year we had to play a team on the East Coast and the Eastern time zone. I'm a, I don't know, man, Ben, to be honest. I mean, look, everybody says it. I'm going to try, you know, uh, common sense would tell you you're going to have more fans, you would travel less. Um, I, I'm a believer that uh, we should, you know, we should beat North Carolina if we played better defensively. I don't care where the game was at. So, but I guess you got to try to get every advantage on your side, and it's easier for you guys. Coach, can you talk a little bit about how this relationship and friendship developed between you and, and Coach Allen? He tried to hire me when he got the pitch job. So, you know, Sonny Vaccaro recommended it to recommended me to him. I was a young guy at Cincinnati, and I said, I told Sonny, "You're trying to help Ben Howell." And he said, "Yeah, I'm very close with him." I said, "Well, how about let's try to help Mick Cronin?" He goes, "He goes, yeah, you should stay with Coach Huggins." <laughs> he goes, "Now who should?" It? And then he said, "Well, all right, we got to get a good assistant for Ben, you know." So then we talked about guys that would help Coach Howell. And then at some point, um, you know, I don't know, we start sitting together at games. So, you know, our, both of us being our relationship with Sonny, um, is sometime, at some point, start, it's not like when I was at Cincinnati and I got that job, it wasn't like I was going to beat him for recruits. So, you know, the guy, like if, 
you and I are recruiting the same guy. We're probably not sitting with each other in the summer. So it wasn't like I was going to out recruit him at UCLA when I was rebuilding at Cincinnati. And I was, you know, so I don't know. Um, ben, I, it, Ben's a, he's a no-nonsense guy. He's my type of guy, so. And there's a tremendous trust factor that's there between the two of you. Oh, yeah. I mean, I talked to him about the job here before I took it. I asked his advice. And then, you know, I, obviously after I got it, about different, you know, a lot of different things, staff, many other things. Did you hear from him after you won the oh, yeah. title? Did he yeah. send you a text or call he you? Said, he said, you got to win the next two, get to one seed in the West. <laughs> I told him, you know, you know him now. He's He gets fixated on one thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> you you talked about the press a little. Yeah, uh, you instituted that more this year. Looking mm -hmm. over the course of the year, would you think it's been successful? Yeah. Two also, how does that impact your half court defense? Too well, it's hard to if when you do press, it's hard to get the. Sometimes you're you're going to have matchups. When you get back to your man to man, you you don't have the right matchups. Right, you got to just get the closest guy to you. So uh, you have to live with that. If you know the the, the yin and yang of you know, I want to, we want to slow them down or we want to mess with them with our pressure, but we're, if they you know when they break it, we're probably not going to have the matchups or at least all the matchups you want in man to man. So uh, you know you have to weigh that. You have to weigh it and. You know, I would, you know, I'm always thinking it like you just thinking ahead. You know, look, Tiger is small, and he's not as uh, good on the ball as Dylan, Jalen, Will. Um, you know, those guys are better towards the front of it. Even Abramo in practice, uh, Sebastian Max, a uh, tough six foot two or three on the ball guy. So you know, I, I. Uh, I'd love, love to be able to have where all of our guards can really get to it. Because I know how disruptive it can be. You know, but uh, it's a, you gotta, you got to play to your personnel at times. So you see us putting Tiger in the second line a lot. So you got to save his energy for offense. The other guys are just more uh, effective, on, you know, in the front of it. Do you get a good feeling the kids know the urgency of the last two games? I would hope so, you know, but again, like I goes back to the beginning of this, you know, my paranoia never ends, you know, so you just worry about, um, you know, we've been on such a grind and a run to get to where we've gotten to that they understand that we're not there yet, you know, where everybody else is. I know the congratulations you won the Pac-12, because I, I, I got all that stuff. I know they're getting all that stuff. So... Um, it's a concern. They know. They know, but, you know, Indiana knew that Iowa was a good team and they had to they had to come out to play last night, but they couldn't get their emotional gas tank back after their Purdue win. You know, so I think that's, you know, sometimes people talk about all this stuff nationally and, well, strength of schedule and this and this and that. Like, you know, like Houston's in the American. I don't care who they're playing. It is hard to win all the time. Really, really, really hard. I don't care who you're playing. So because of the emotional gas tank factor and people are so fired up to play against you, it's just really, really hard. So we've been able to do it, but we got two more. All right, guys. You can Thank have you. Thanks.